People always ask me what I do. When I tell them I'm a flute teacher and performer, they look at me and say, How? You're deaf? It always happens. Ten years ago, I started playing the flute and was making such good progress that I began to think I could make it to the top. I started to dream that I could perform in front of a massive audience with a full orchestra and play a brilliant piece of music. Now, all of a sudden, tonight, I am packing my bag for a flight to Russia tomorrow because I am going to play in front of the audience with the orchestra. I've worked so hard for this, but it doesn't seem real. I have no idea what to expect in Russia and afterwards in London. I'm really excited. I so hope I sleep well tonight. I really hope I do. Without my hearing aid, I am profoundly deaf. I can't hear a thing. If someone was shut down my ear, I may hear it slightly, but other than that, I can't hear anything. When I wear my hearing aid, I am able to receive sound. If it's that high, then I can absorb a lot of sound. If it's too slow, stay in a situation where I can opt out, that's fine. But when I am focused in on my mood, then it must be at the maximum. This is the first day and the first rehearsal. It's been such a model. All the other performers have been rehearsing too and I'm the last of the day. This had meant my time slot had been reduced as the day went on and when it was my turn, the orchestra was tired from having played all day. I hoped for the best but it soon became clear that it wasn't easy. I couldn't hear the orchestra because piano was in the way. I couldn't follow the conductor's hand movement either. So it's been a really depressing, awful first day. Gonna play A. Good morning. Hello. Hello. All right. How are you? I'm okay today. Not sure what to expect, but go on. You need a stand, yeah? Yeah. So I'll be standing here. Uh, and I have one music stand. Oh, there. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, it's all right. Three. Talk a three, Valencia.
father and I were sitting there in the, in the stalls, quite close to what, what was happening on stage. And we nearly fainted when we realized that she probably wouldn't be able to do this. I think it's a bit too far. I yeah. think, yeah, maybe slow down okay. a little bit. Just do I think. Yeah. You sure as? Medlene, a little bit. My father's with me because he's so knowledgeable about music. What with being a teacher, musician and composer, he's the invaluable support. And also, as a hearing person, he's been able to give me his opinion. He's so helpful. I've still got the staff of third movement, one more. We haven't got time. No, they maybe have to tomorrow. Break. Yes, tomorrow. All oh, right, I see. Tomorrow we'll do it all again. Yeah, all yeah. oh, um, I thought all could be a bit quiet, or maybe it's me. Do you think? They weren't quiet, no. They're mm. fine. <laughs> okay, then, thank you. But it's, the, it's because they're a long way from you. Yeah, that's, that's a long exactly way. Yeah. That's why. Okay, then. You can't feel them. You can't feel any sound. Really quiet. Yeah. I, I'm used to playing the piano where I hear. Yeah, it's very well. different. Very different. If anything, you were getting slightly ahead of us. Yeah? Okay then, thank okay. you. Thank you. Today's first rehearsal has made me realise that it's not going to be easy. I'm ready to play, but the touch of the violin was so soft that I'm straining to hear. So I lost the pose. I wasn't sure about the conductor's hand movement either because I'm not too new to him yet. As for my playing, I'm fine on piano, but with the orchestra, the connection isn't there. It was disappointing and the orchestra wanted to finish and get home, though time was short. I left feeling really low. Orchestra were well, no, were they? No. Thought it was me? Yeah. Well, you have to ask them if they can play a little bit louder. I oh, asked Martin if they said, uh, maybe you're far away from the orchid. Another thing I noticed on the stage today was that when I stopped playing, the conductor was talking to people like the French horn and others. I just couldn't follow it at all. I know he was talking in English, not Russian, but I still felt lost. I had no control on the stage. Too soon. Came in too soon there. Too early. Too early. Try and keep an eye on him while the conductor's beat. What he's doing there, isn't he? Tonight, I decided to take a look at the tape from today's rehearsals to try and analyse where things went wrong. My father came with me, we went through it, so now I feel more ready for tomorrow. Hopefully. Ruth was diagnosed deaf at around the age of three and um, started wearing hearing aids from that age. We uh, weren't sure whether she had, well we didn't know she had a hearing problem until then, uh, she hadn't. She wasn't speaking um, as fluently, as, well, very fluently at all. 
When I wake up in the morning and get out of bed without my hearing aid on, I can hear nothing. I go downstairs, fill up the kettle, put the bread in the toaster and don't hear any of that. It's only after breakfast when I go and put my hearing aid in that I can hear my parents talking and other sounds around the house. Maybe my brother will play the piano. I can hear that too. All styles I know so well. I can remember times when Ruth was young. One of the boys would be playing the piano and Ruth would uh, climb climb across, sit on their laps or sit on my lap and uh, play along with it, join in. I think we have, uh, I can remember once, uh, crawling a- along the piano keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> my parents are both musical and my three brothers and I grew up with music. We are all clothed and aged. My earliest memories of music were going to concerts when we lived in London to some fantastic hall. I sometimes go a bit bored, but at the same time I'm fascinated by it all. That's really my earliest musical experiences from the age of about five or so. I remember when I was at primary school a mainstream school, I often felt left out and alone in the class. I couldn't understand the teacher or what was going on. But when I came home, I was having piano lessons and I got a lot of comfort from that one-to-one tuition. I felt confident that like I'm really being given something. But when I go back to school, I felt lost again. That's when I realised I belonged with moved it. After mainstream primary school, I went to Mary Hare. That was a huge culture shock to be surrounded by 200 deaf students and sign language. Even though it was an oral school, my friends there knew sign language. It was a completely different world, but in the classroom, the aspect was fantastic. Teachers were easy to live with. We all worked to support each other. The education was good. Moved it with also on the curriculum that interested me. In my first year of moved it class, I'm forever putting my hand up to answer the question as the others did not know the answers. The teacher realised that I had some knowledge, but in the end asked me not to raise my hand so much. It was a bit boring for me, but the teacher realised I had musical ability. I wasn't so keen on the piano anymore, which the teacher was really disappointed that. In January, we had a stand which I passed easily, and the teacher said it was time for me to learn an instrument. She didn't, I couldn't decide, she said she would pick one for me, so she went into the cupboard to store that there was a flute available gave it to me and that's how it all began. If I had been given a violin or a saxophone, I would have done just as well because I already had a key musical interest. You have been given the flute with thrilling. When I was in the strip form, I would sometimes practice for an hour really early in the morning. 
I'm so dedicated because I knew if I wanted to perform, I would have to learn as much as I could. But all my applications to music college were rejecting and I didn't understand why. I took her to one music college for an audition and she went through the normal process of the audition and did extremely well and they acknowledged how great she was. However, it suddenly became clear that although we were going through the process, they had absolutely no intention really of giving her a place. One college offered me a play just to see how I got on. I went, but it wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Trinity College of Music asked me to assess her uh, for uh, taking part in their foundation course. And uh, I was quite amazed at how well she played, actually. I couldn't understand how she did it without being able to hear. Uh, and I had some, some worries about accepting her because I didn't know how I would teach her. And I didn't know if we'd be able to throw ideas back and forth and how, how we would communicate in general. Um, but I'm happy to say that my fears were unfounded. Um, it, I wasn't very long before I forgot that Ruth has a, deaf, a, a hearing problem. And we just got on with the business of making music. After Ruth had been at Trinity for one year, she had a final recital, which was the culmination of this year's uh, examination. And I went to the recital, I was ex really excited to be going, and I took a little camera, which you're not allowed to do, but I filmed Ruth performing, and she was among a number of students performing that evening. That night it was clear that they wouldn't accept her on the degree course. She was equal to any of those students there performing. She was better than some of those students performing. and. I remember going up to the, the head of the woodwind section and I was, yeah, furious I think at this point as opposed to being devastated and knocked back at the first audition. This was a year down the line, this is someone who'd proved themselves and now they were being told actually no and I could not see it, I could not understand why. After the rejection I thought I would look for a different college and I was offered the audition. I played with them, I knew the piece well and felt pretty good about the performance until at the interview they asked me if I liked any other subject. I told them I was good at art to which they said perhaps you should do that instead. I'm stunned. That meant I wasn't good enough, that it would be impossible to break into the music world with that. My confidence was smashed completely. The main problem they felt would be the deafness, not only in terms of her playing and being with an orchestra, but all parts of their course in terms of the oral, they'd have to change, they'd have to adapt, and really they weren't prepared to take um, what would be a risk, but, but a, a calculated risk. You know, here was a great musician. Once I realised that I wasn't going to get into a music college, I started looking for work. I got a job in the floors, sweeping up and cleaning boxes and doing what I'm told by the boss. It made me all the more determined. I'm seething they broke me to prove them wrong. It was clearly evident from the very beginning that Ruth's music, musicianship is greater than many other people. Uh, I, it was just, I, it's hard to explain, it was so exciting going from one lesson to the next to see how much she would improve. Um, and Ruth is so passionate about music that it rubs off and I hope maybe some of my passion rubbed off on her as well. Anne was very supportive and suggested I'd find the Welsh College of Music and Drama. I wrote an application form with a strong support and reference from both my teacher and Kristen Rocker. After the audition, they gave me a plate. I'm elated. So Ruth went to Cardiff and spent four years at uh, the Royal Welsh College of Music in Cardiff. Every summer at college, we would have a, a session performance. 
My sister in the first year was from another part of the country and didn't know that I'm deaf. I played for them and I passed. Again in the second year, a different sister who also didn't know that I'm deaf passed me. I thought, look, I can do this. In the third and fourth years, the standards became really tough, particularly on stale detail. Sometimes a long note on the flute would drop and I needed to remember not to let it happen. A hearing flute would hear it and remedy the problem. I had to remember this information from my lesson, though some allowances were made, however the assessment was still strict. Music college was tough, especially for assessment performances. Whenever I had one coming up, I also had invitations for my deaf friend to party. I had to turn them down because I needed to be really focused. I love the deaf community. It's a place where I can really switch off, stand and relax. But I need to be ready for my assessment. It was awful not being able to explain to my deaf friend what music means to me. It's hard to understand if you're not a musician yourself. It can be lonely, having to be so focused. I had to be really hard on myself and spend a lot of time on my own, concentrating on the things I wanted to achieve. It was extremely tough. Four tough years. Every year she used to give a recital and we did notice how well she was doing, how well she was playing. And so we was very proud of that. And then on top to write her dissertation, which gave her a 2 one, we felt really proud that it was such an achievement. On my graduation day, I thought, yes, I've done it. This meant I had been to the barriers to get my degree. It wasn't about being deaf or overcoming my disability. It was all about the barriers I had faced over the years to achieve my goal. On graduation day, I was awarded a trophy for the best dissertation. I picked a provocative title. During my research, I found a quote that there's no point in teaching music to deaf people. I'm shocked that those kind of attitudes were still around in 2001. I'm furious and wrote a strong piece rebuting this theory. At the end, I won a trophy for the best research. I'm really chuffed. It was great. That's it. You see, you yeah. carried on blowing there, didn't you? That's yeah. the much nicer end of the note. Try again. In today's lesson here, in this smaller space, the teacher is focused in on directing sound. I'm working closely with Maria on the piano, and it's mostly about guiding the style to get it accurate. That's what I've learned today. Okay, okay, that's good. So you're doing it without, do it without the grace note for now. Okay, without the, um... For now. Da, 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 dum, da, dee, dee, dee. It's just amazing that someone could have reached that level uh, on the flute and to be about to do these concerto performances in Russia and in Britain with, with big orchestras uh, from a point of view of not really being able to hear very much. I was, so I was very impressed. And I was impressed by her kind of thirst for, for knowledge, for wanting to learn more and to know more. I mean, she's a, she's a delightful girl and she, she came across as a very keen intellect that so she wanted to, you know, benefit in every way that, that she could from the lesson time. Now, at the end of the note, we need to get the air to come out of the flute. Do you see what I mean? So that you're still blowing. There were times where uh, Ruth was playing a high note at the beginning of a phrase, and she would just end it prematurely, very slightly, by a tiny, like a nanosecond, but I didn't feel as though she had expanded on that note to its maximum. 
So what I was saying was, uh, love the note, that means to extend it for its full length of time before moving on to whatever came next in the phrase. That, that was what I was trying to get across there, that you've got to feel sufficiently about that note that you want to expand it for, the, for its full length and not kind of end it prematurely. That's it. Today was important to me because it made me realise how much more physical I need to be in my playing. The orchestra is looking to me for their cues as to what I want from them. I've been so new to playing on my own that I've forgotten about other people. Today was a reminder that I need to make more news of my body movement and be more physical. Good, that's good. Look at that! My name in Russian on a performance poster. In our orchestra, there are different styles, textures, moves. It's like having actors on stage all bouncing off each other. That's what it's like with instruments. When they all blend, it's exciting. That's what the orchestra is doing, bringing all those differences together. All the high and low styles combining into a full style, making it so colourful, like a work of art. I feel so privileged to be performing on the same stage as Evelyn Glenny, someone I've admired all my life. There's a little deaf girl over there who's enthralled by what's happening on the stage. It's so visual and lively. She's already showing interest in music. If I could, I'd teach her all about the world of music, what that could open up to her. That's why I think music should be taught to all children when they are young. A lot of people asked me, how can you hear what you play? It's a very hard question to answer. It's a bit like trying to explain to a blind person what different colours look like. You can't, it's very difficult. I'm trying to explain that I can hear well with my hearing aid, but without them, I'm deaf to the world. Music of Life Foundation is um, an organisation that works with uh, musically gifted uh, young musicians with uh, special needs and disabilities and with the deaf. Um, we really believe that music has no boundaries.
thought that uh, by the time Ruth is going to be on stage, there should be no piano there between her and violins because it's essential for her to be as, as, as close to them as possible. So the, 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 the first rehearsal, Ruth is standing uh, on the stage, uh, is the end of rehearsal, orchestra is tired, conductor is tired, Ruth is, is over, over emotional about it because it's really hard, at, it's her first time and I know the first rehearsal normally is very hard but in Ruth's case it was just a little bit too much. It's just a real roller coaster, and in a way, the music making is the easier part. It's trying to deal with the emotional side um, that that is quite fascinating, actually. So, and we all have to deal with that. Um, and so, I think this will be probably a life-changing experience for Ruth. And he says you're coming in too early. I have to watch conductor. Uh, and then we're and the confidence of the good doctor. Don't do that. No. Don't. Okay. She asked uh, if the piano could be moved and. After a, a lot of deliberation, it was moved, but it wasn't easy. They had to rearrange the order of the programme uh, in order to do this. But um, these, you know, these are the things that have to be taken into consideration. If you've got someone who has uh, a hearing problem, you've, you've got to make sure that they can hear the other musicians. Ba -da -da -dum. Don't, don't get off this note too soon. Better. Uh, yeah. I um, got new to your hands, Frank. You got? I got new to your hands, Frank. Yes, folk. of course. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just have to look for the downbeat. Yeah. Okay, then. It's all a question of getting used to each other. Mm. Yeah. Are you going to move the pencil in the dough? Are you going to move the pen? I can't remember. Did I use anything? No, nothing at all. Um, Dude, um, like that. Oh. I don't remember.
Okay, thank you. That would help. Me. Much better. Today, I think my rehearsal went well. I'm quite pleased with the way we all gelled and performed as one. We moved the piano out of the way. I also began to understand the conductor more, his movement and style. At the end of the rehearsal, the conductor told me that when everything was finished, he wanted to meet with me. He took me through the piece of music, phrase by phrase, which has been so helpful. I'm much clearer about the hand movement now, which is so important. Tonight is the first night and the first time I'll be playing as a soloist in this setting. Really important for me. That means me on stage making all the tradition, controlling the piece, watching the conductor, his daughter. It's a huge thing for me tonight. Music means movement. When you look at a painting, it's not just colours you see. You see texture, roughness, softness, light and hardness. It just then moves it. When you play, you can be powerfully loud or gentle. You can give direction by playing faster or slower. It's art. I've taken music and made it my own. You can look at the truth of music and feel nothing at all. But when it's played, that's when it comes out, when it comes to life. It's so dating. You can pick any piece of music in the world and express yourself through it. about being a soloist is that you have to take chances you know you have to sometimes play the, the softest playing you've never ever played before the loudest playing that you've never played before or to try a phrase in a way that you've never actually played in the privacy of your, your private rehearsal room you've got to take those chances
It was lovely. Oh, yes, we thought Ruth rose to the occasion. She seems to she communicated to the to the, uh, the audience. Here I come. I felt like I'd been transported into the hearing world of music.